I did my solo show this week. I did my solo show, uh, which was, hmm. Look, I was really happy with it. I, I felt like I, I didn't want... Because what happened was with with the original Western Girl is I wrote that when I was obsessed with the 12 steps and with being sober. But now, and like, you know, being like this reform prostitute kind of thing. But then, and then they were like, well, you got to do Western Girl again. But now I am a prostitute again occasionally and... I smoke weed. So like I couldn't I felt like I couldn't do a show that was about recovering from that when that wasn't the situation. So I was like, well, I'm just going to have to do a show that's telling people like what's up and like where I'm at, you know? So it was like, yeah, I went back to like, you know, whoring and I went back to like, you know, smoking weed and I I was really happy with how it went, you know, but I was kind of and but then and and yes, I will admit, I will. Admit, the one issue with it is it did get a bit rape heavy. Get yeah, raped, rape, rape allegation, rape tapes. He raped me, raped me, <laughs> raped her. Got raped by their dads, rape victim, and I was raped and I was beaten by him. And then, fuck's sake, I'm telling a rape story. I told you when he raped me, raped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, like it got very rape heavy. I didn't really notice how rape heavy it would get, but I was really proud. But I was really happy with some of the ideas I got out that night and everything else and everyone who came along and like we apparently like a couple of people like walked out you know but that's because that's because girl like you know super like left wing and I'm like apolitical you know I don't have like a political like agenda or any I I don't know anything you know just whoever's charismatic I'm gonna believe you know what I mean or or, like whatever my mum tells me to believe you know (laughs) like anyway but yeah, and then, um, sorry, where was I? Uh, yeah, but what will happen is because, like, like you know, like, the left has, like, like, like because, like, the, like, you know, they hear, oh, it's a show by, by, like, a sex worker and she's, like, got a history of DV and, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, let's go, like, support this show. They think I'm going to be... They think I'm going to be something like I'm not. And like my friend uh, Greg pointed out, he was like, Sean, what's going to happen is that the left is going to love what you're talking about but hate how you talk about it. And the right is going to like how you talk but not what you're talking about, you know. But anyway, so basically just a bunch of like fat fucking loser, fucking loser girls like walked out of the show. But I was like, whatever, losers, you know. Um like they were, just, they they just like looked like like their hair was like coloured and they had like a nose ring and then, and they were like fat and they just like like you know what I mean like just like how you imagine it just fucking gross and then and apparently one dude walked out during my like wanting a Down syndrome baby bit no but like, like you know and I I really do have to like like because I, I I want a baby I want a baby but if I do have a baby I want like a I really I I, I have you guys seen like a Down syndrome baby. Have you guys seen it? Like, they're so fucking cute. Like, I, I, I recently became an auntie to, like, a Down syndrome baby. I say that so I can get away with this joke. Like... <laughs> you know, I, I recently became an auntie... Yeah. I'm not speaking my truth. I, I don't know... Uh, anyway. <laughs> no, you know, but, but Down syndrome babies, like, they're, they're, they're so fucking cute. Like, they make other babies look like fucking... <laughs> You know, and there's kind of like this test you have to get when you're pregnant. There's this test you have to get and it's kind of like the Down syndrome test. You know, and I think if I got pregnant, I would get that test. And if the doctor was like, Sean, your baby doesn't have Down syndrome, I'd be like, can I please get an abortion then? (laughs) You know? (laughs) Because they're so fucking cute. (laughs) It's like, it's like... that, like I know, I know, design, I, I know, designer babies are like frowned upon. <laughs> but like, can you give it an extra chromosome? <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's, if it's that unethical, you know, because the extra chromosome it actually uh, the extra chromosome actually makes them super happy and super smart. Did you know? That? No, 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 not smart. I uh, <laughs> I fucked that up. <laughs> 
Yeah, actually, actually, I grew up in a town. I grew up in a town, and there was like a Down syndrome kid in the town. And I remember the dad said to me, Sean, if everyone in the world had Down syndrome, there'd be no wars. It's like, yeah, there'd probably also be no roads. Yeah. <laughs> and like, no fucking infrastructure, you know? <laughs> but we definitely have hugs. And wrestling, you know? <laughs> A lot of people get very offended. I don't know why people get so offended by that bit. I tell you where that joke has gone well in more like kind of like metropolitan areas, but for some and usually and usually like metropolitan areas I can be a bit like hit or miss, you know? Like it can be a bit like, "Oh, you know, but in when I've noticed that the joke doesn't go down well with bogans, which is interesting, you know, cuz bogans will kind of be like, oh, comedy, like, you can say anything. You should be able to fucking say anything, you know. But they can be politically correct about, like, certain things, you know. And disability is, like, one of them. Like, bogans don't like it when you joke about disability because there's always someone in a bogans family who has a fucking disability and is on the DSP and they will always get offended by it, you know. So I had, that, yeah, one, like, older dude walk out during, like, the Down syndrome bit and I think the fucking lefty blue-haired bitches were walking out during the – or pink-haired bitches were just fucking, like, walking out. The fat girls were just walking out during, like, the rape stuff, you know. Anyway, I was I was pretty happy with how the show went because what I was most happy about was that I was honest about where I was. But Shane, my best friend Shane Hunter – uh, felt like the show was void of God. It's he said the show had a God sent a God shaped hole in it. There was no God. I'm sorry that my show lacked God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shane Hunter, that I did not incorporate a be- a God in the show. You know, he felt like it was lacking of hope. Basically, is how he felt. The show was lacking of hope. And it wasn't as moving as the previous show, you know? So that upset me. That upset me, but all was fine because in this new life I live, I was able, Doug Stanhope called me the next day and I was able to debrief with um, Doug Stanhope about how I didn't like how my show went, um, which he didn't really give a shit about, I I imagine, Uh, you know? But um, what he did tell me was, surround yourself with yes men and act like you're already famous and so I told that to Shane I was like you know Shane Doug says I should just surround myself with yes men and act like I'm already famous and Shane's like no I don't agree with that so that's where we are I'm wondering you know Shane is my best friend in the whole world he's one of the best comics in Australia one of the most highly knowledgeable about comic com comedians in the world so when I am like paying him out I just want everyone to know that there's like a fuckload of love there that is like unconditional he does he does toe the line with making that love unconditional occasionally you know like when I do quite a rape heavy show and he just wants to criticize me the whole time about it you know but He's always been like my biggest supporter and uh, yeah, there's there's no words. I forget where I was going to go with the Shane bit. Oh, I forget where I was going to go. Oh, fuck, I forget where I was going to go with that. Um, basically, I just can't really do uh, anything uh, like <laughs> I f- Shane is like my stage mum, you know. Uh, one time Shane told me uh, that I have to get hotter so I can get on the hot girl gigs. That's like my stage mum. <laughs> You know, but Shane's good. Sh- Shane is sh- sh- Shane is not a, not a f- not shy to criticize. You know, I remember when I was uh, when I was like all fucked up after being raped and bashed, and I was uh, we went out for breakfast, and he said to me, "You know, Shane, guys like girls who are curvy and friendly." I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, Shane Hunter. I'm sorry, Shane Hunter. If I am not curvy and friendly after being raped and bashed and being in a women's domestic violence refuge, I'm sorry. Shane Hunter, you know? Anyway, so he was quite critical of the show and um, doesn't doesn't agree uh, that I should be hanging around uh, with yes men 
and he's, he's been very much a no man, you know. Anyway, so yeah, I did that solo show, and um, whatever, and. You know, but it was hard for me to completely concentrate on the show because earlier this week, um, I don't, I, I got in contact because I, because I was thinking like, where can we go from here with this show? Where can we go from here? So rightly enough, I contacted, um, ex-Liberian cannibal warlord, General Butt Naked to ask him if he'd be willing to do an interview. I thought it would be, like, way harder to contact, like, an ex-cannibal warlord from Liberia. It actually was surprisingly simple because he has Instagram. We live in a dystopia, ladies and gentlemen. And I have been following on on Instagram for a while because he occasionally does, like, live Instagram things. And I'll just, like, watch it and be like, what the fuck, it's a cannibal. You know, it's a fucking, oh, my fucking God. You know, so and I messaged and I and I messaged Doug about it and I was like, "Yo, like I I want to get like this like ex cannibal warlord like on my podcast. I reckon it'll be easy to contact him." And rightly enough, I sent him a message. I sent him an email. I found oh I found his email on his Instagram. I sent him an email. He got back to me in about a couple of hours. So I just had like an email from a cannibal warlord where he he gave his number. He sent me his number. So now I have the number of a cannibal warlord. A cannibal warlord. Like, and Shane knew that that week I had gotten in contact with a cannibal warlord to try and get them on my podcast. But he still found a way to criticize me. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm getting in contact with, like, cannibal warlords for my podcast. Like, he's a ca- Like, that's... The other morning, I was texting a cannibal warlord. Being, like, like texting him. And then... Doug Stanhope called me after and I was like we live in a fucking dystopia you know so I have this fucking cannibal warlord's number uh, and like I, I just can't believe I have his number like in my and, and and it seems as though unless we're having a communication issue it seems as though he's happy to come on the podcast and do an interview this guy and we're gonna do we're gonna make clips of like telling you a bit about this guy you know like this guy used to drink the blood of children but he is now a preacher and he is kind of lightly referenced in the uh musical the book of mormon so the character in that is i didn't watch that musical but uh he i know that general butt naked is mentioned in that So it's been very hard for me to concentrate on absolutely anything when I have been texting with a cannibal. Like, I don't know if this is going to have, like, a psychological effect on me. You know what? Like, I've been texting, like, like my housemate was getting mad at me, like, just before I left uh, because, like, I didn't do the washing up. And I was like, it's really hard for me to care about any of this when I'm talking to a cannibal, you know? Like, like... And and he might come on my podcast. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this guy used to drink the blood of children. There's a there's an interview with him where he says we used to drink the blood of an innocent child. Get us, bring the an innocent child. Yeah. And we'll open the back of the child, trust out the heart. Alive. Yes. And I'm like, why do you have to say innocent before child? Like, just say child. But he always will say that we drank the blood of the innocent child. Like. You know, so I felt like the only next best thing I can do other than getting molested by uh, just by an intellectually disabled man in my podcast is to have uh, an ex-Liberian cannibal warlord turned Christian preacher, General Butt Naked on my podcast, you know, or on my YouTube show. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I, but I think I can relate a lot to general butt naked in a way in a weird way I I can relate to him kind of like I can relate to him you know like because what me and him although we come from two very separate worlds he has been working on his redemption because he is now a preacher um and 
And I've also been working on my redemption, but I've kind of like fallen off the wagon a bit. There's not really much redempting going on at the moment, really. Um, Except I think I should have redemption for getting a cannibal warlord on my podcast, actually. If I, if I can pull it off. If I can pull it off, Shane can never criticize me. No one can ever criticize me again because it's like, well, did you get a cannibal? Did you talk to a cannibal? Did you get a cannibal's number? No. Like he has been on other documentaries. Like, you know, like he was on a Vice documentary, Larry Charles' Dangerous World of Comedy, which is the most incredible comedy documentary you'll ever see. But they would have had like a whole production team. I'm just a hooker from Brisbane who's talking to a cannibal warlord in Liberia. Like, I don't, I don't know what else I can do to, like, prove myself, you know? Except hopefully get this guy on. And if, if he doesn't, like, yeah, you know? But, but, yeah, he's also working on his redemption, you know? So that's something, like, I want to talk to him about cancel culture, you know? Because he's kind of faced that. I've faced that. I faced that um, with many comedy clubs. Um, you know, many comedy clubs. Uh, he's he's rumoured to possibly be homophobic. I've been rumoured to be homophobic because one time at Good Chat, I said faggot for two minutes straight. So it's something like we can both kind of like relate on. And I think, why not just get this motherfucker on my podcast, you know? So, yeah, and this is why I need a suitor because we're going to try and call him at the end of this episode. We're going to try and call him, and then and it's eight. It's it's after eight p.m. There, I'm at eight p.m. here. Like I'm going to have to go home and sleep alone after talking to a cannibal warlord. You know, like I I feel like I at least deserve like someone to snuggle with after that, but. I don't have anyone. So I'm going to talk to this cannibal warlord and then I'm just going to go home and like, hopefully, hopefully, if we don't get through to him today, then I don't know what I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll just, I'll be like, oh, well, I I bet Olivia Grace probably could have gotten in fucking contact with him, but I can't because I'm a piece of shit. Like I'll I'll fucking, I'll, I think, I think I'll start doing meth again if I can't get in contact with him. I will hate myself so much. I think the most important thing in my life right now is getting in contact with this cannibal. I, I actually I actually I even brought a change of clothes like before I contact him. And also Shane was like to me, be, remember to be honest with the cannibal, Sean. Be honest with him. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, we got to think about ethics right now when we're about to talk to a guy who used to eat children. Yeah, I got to think about ethics. Be honest with him. But I actually, I even bought a change of clothes because I, I don't want to look shit talking to the cannibal. You know, I want him to think, like, I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know. I felt like I should dress up for him. I don't, I just felt like I should dress up for him. I felt like it was a special occasion and I can't just wear this fucking ugly added ass jacket, you know, so I actually did do have a change of clothes that I'll get into before we contact him. Okay. So he hasn't answered. He was online before, but what I realized is that he is a preacher now and right now in Liberia, it would be about 12 and it's a Sunday. So he's probably in the middle of doing a sermon, which is probably why he was up and then went to, and then has probably gone to do his sermons that he does uh, to the families whose family members he killed during the war. But now he is their preacher uh, because... That's the world we live in. Holy shit. Holy shit. Like, it's like cancel culture doesn't even apply there. Like, does it apply? Does it apply? I know. We'll have to ask him all this. Like, do you have haters? Like, He does have haters. I have watched some stuff with him that, you know, he's a bit freaked out because there's been some assassination attempts on his life. Um, It's like, yeah, it's a bit freaky, isn't it, when it happens to you? But, like, how could anything, like, even freak this guy out, you know? Like... Oh geez, is there's just too, there's too much there's too much to even go into. He also uh, has let us know on his Instagram lives in his updates is that they're bored. The camp is very boring. Most of the time, if we have work to do, 
before in the evening the boys are tired but we have not work uh recently no job to do but then we realize that the camp is boring because there is no television no tv at least if the children if the guys the people have tv for in the evening if they are not working they could be watching some on we all just sitting around you want it, boy? He's bored. Him and his child soldiers, wherever they live, or well, in Liberia, and they're like, they live in like kind of like a community, I guess. Um, they're bored because they don't have a television. You know? I talked to Doug about that, and he was like, I don't know if they have CNN in Liberia. <laughs> you know? So we were thinking, like, can we get like a television to him? I don't know. And sent, I thought I'd send him to like, some, I don't know, but they're bored, you know? So I think I've got some ideas of what they could do about their boredom as well, him and his child soldiers. A lot of things would be pretty boring after eat, drinking the blood of innocent child um, and fighting naked in battle. Everything would be pretty mundane, I think, after that, you know? So it doesn't surprise me that he's also him saying he's bored. I feel like that's like a lot of audacity. I feel like if you've drank the blood of children, you can like never complain about anything again. You know, oh, I'm bored, but I got away with drinking the blood of an innocent child, you know. So anyway, that man who drank the blood of an innocent child. But preachers are always, preachers are all, have always got a bit of a fucking dirty backstory. You know, it's not just in West Africa. It's also in like here, you know, like we have like, like, you know, the Catholic priests and all them like they they've all got like these dodgy backstories you know so it's, it's just the same except it's like you know um i guess none of our catholic priests have ever oh they probably fucking have a eh? like they're such freaks so this is just this is just a guy that admits to it which is also what i kind of admire about at least he admits to it he's like i raped women i raped people i drank i ate children I murdered people. Like, he admits to it. He, you know? Like, my ex doesn't admit to that. Like, you know? Like, he's he's not a coward, if anything. If it, I've decided I'm going to put him down as my next of kin for any paperwork I do moving forward. You know, I want them to... Call, how funny would it have been, though? Imagine if we had gotten this guy to advocate to my HR to get it back. It just, I just got um, this <laughs> this man is advocating for me to get my job back. So, yeah. All right. I reckon we should try him like, so we're going to just try him one more time. Or should we not? Because we don't want to ruin this uh, relationship we have with the cannibal, Alex. We don't want to ruin the business relationship we have. So do we really want to call him again when that might annoy him because he's doing a sermon? Yeah, no, just send a message. I'm always going to end everything with God bless. Fucking hell. Oh, well. We'll have to try again to contact the cannibal tomorrow so that I have an excuse to message Doug Stanhope <laughs> and let him know. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. Well, let, let's hope. Let's hope. And we'll get in contact with him tomorrow. And I will get a call at 3 a.m. from a cannibal. And no one's going to see it. If Ashan gets a call from a cannibal at 3 a.m. and no one's around, did she really get a call from a cannibal? <laughs> so we got a mini cliffhanger okay i got a bit sure of myself so for the next 24 hours until we can try and call him again everyone's free to criticize me but until then so for the next 24 hours people can criticize me but let's tune in next next episode to see if we do 
Get in contact uh, with the cannibal warlord from Liberia, General Butt Naked, now known as Joshua Blyhe. Fingers crossed. Never thought I'd fingers cross that, but fingers crossed. I- I'm feeling more depressed. I feel like I would have felt depressed whether I'd called him today or whether I hadn't called him today. I would be depressed either. I'd be like, oh, I'm depressed. I can't call him. And then I'll be, I'll be staring into the abyss if I had called him. I'd be like, oh, my God. I called to a cannibal. I'm going to like disassociate, you know? Anyway, I wonder what my intellectually disabled friend and old man are doing. Uh, I wonder if I can go smoke weed at their house now. Uh, tune in next week, folks. Thank you. Cool. No, it's 22.39. They're not going to be up. <laughs>